next time if I have another kid, epidural me from the beginning, babe. I don't want to feel a thing, okay? Please can do what you wanna live how you wanna spin what you wanna be who you wanna be. Hi you guys, it's your girl Jenna Nicole here and welcome back to my channel. So today as you guys can see by the title, I'm going to be sharing my birth story, my labor and delivery story you guys, giving you the details on what happened. It definitely didn't go as I planned but I also didn't really have a plan but yeah I don't want to blabber too much because my son is sleeping. I don't know how long he's going to be asleep for but yeah that is definitely enough blabbering. Let's just go ahead and get into this story okay. all right so i'm gonna mention like a few days before so i did get two membrane sweeps i had got one at 38 weeks in a few days and then i had got another membrane sweep at 39 weeks in a few days and honestly i wasn't expecting the membrane sweeps to really do anything because for one i'm a first time mom and then for two a lot of people say like it's not gonna work unless your body and unless baby is ready it's really not gonna do much of anything so i don't really know if me getting the membrane sweep like helped at all or if it did anything or not but i don't know would i do it again like if i get pregnant again i might just because i don't know i don't know y'all but let me know down below if you've ever had a membrane sweep yeah, so my due date was november the 12th um he was born on november the 11th and what's funny is i actually wrote in my notes that he will be born on november 11th my little brother guessed that he will be born on november 10th so let's fast forward to november 10th and it was one something in the morning and i remember i woke up to like this gushing feeling down there and i literally thought i peed my pants like i remember waking up and i was like what the hell like i literally stood like i literally just sat in the bed for a second and i was like did my water just break now mind you the day before i was having braxton hicks like back to back to back to back like y'all literally i was having like five braxton hicks every hour like i was just tracking them so that was november the 9th i was just having a bunch of braxton hicks and then november 10th um early like one something in the morning my water had broke and so i had got up because i was like why does it feel like i just peed myself and y'all when i got up the water just kept gushing out and gushing out and gushing out and i was low-key scared like i don't know why i was scared but I was scared because it was a lot. So about 1.23 a.m. my water broke. I remember <laughs> running into the room because my mom was here. So I remember running to her and I was like, my water just broke and like it was just getting everywhere. And I was starting to get super nervous because I wasn't sure like, again, I'm a first time mom. So I wasn't sure like after your water breaks, like do you immediately feel the contractions or what? Like I was just nervous. So I was sitting on the toilet. I was texting my midwife now my plan was to give birth at the birthing center i spent most of my pregnancy um, going to get my prenatal care at my midwifery with my midwives i didn't have any plans to give birth in the hospital i wanted to try to do it natural okay i wanted to have the birthing center vibe the reason why i chose the birthing center is because i didn't want any like limitations i wanted to be able to move around how i wanted to and i really liked my midwives and i loved how they advocated for black women and stuff like that so that was the main reason why i chose the birthing center but y'all y'all gonna see okay so boom i'm texting my midwife she's telling me like okay make sure you start getting some rest because you need to have rest for when it's time to push and you know she told me like when i start feeling contractions to time it let her know etc etc so at this point i can't really go back to sleep because like i'm just on edge like i'm just like the fact that in less than 24 hours i'm gonna have a, a, a baby like i was just my mind was just racing thoughts were just going through my head y'all i was just feeling like so nervous and so scared so i was just sitting on the toilet you know i'm talking to my mom she's like it's time like you know so we're all gathered around she's texting the group chat telling my dad and my brothers like you know janelle's water broke blah blah, blah. so fast forward to about three o'clock I would say 3 a.m. is when I started really feeling the contractions. And y'all, I was like, girl. Now, when I first felt them, I was like, okay, I think I, think I can handle this. I think I can deal with this. Um, and so they started getting closer and closer and closer. And my midwife told me that we would meet at the birth center at 9 a.m. So my water broke at 1.32. She was like, we'll meet at the birth center at 9. But if anything changes, to let her know because we can go to the birthing center sooner. I stay about like 10, 15 minutes from the birthing center. I'm not sure how far my midwife stays from the birthing center, but around like three or four, like the contraction started to really pick up. Like they were starting to pick up and it was starting to come like back to back to back. So at this point, I'm like, I don't think I can make it till 9 a.m. So text my midwife. We tell her like, listen, I think we need to come in because 
these things is coming back to back to back. So, boom, we head to the birthing center. It's about five in the morning and I get there and y'all, it felt like as soon as I got there, like everything just started slowing down. Like my contractions started slowing down. Things started going a little bit slower. I wasn't feeling them like back to back like I was. And I just kind of felt like low key irritated because I'm like, it just kind of felt like I was like, I was making it up. Like when I was at home, things was going like they was coming in back to back. And it just felt like as soon as I got in the birthing center, like everything was just chill. Like I was walking around just chilling. Like, I don't know what it was, but it just didn't work out. So they were like, you can continue to stay here and labor here. And we'll just be like in and out throughout the day, or you can go back home and labor at home. So I was like, you know, I'm just go, go back home and labor at home. So I went back home and I just continued to labor at home until about 4 p.m. is when the contractions really started to pick up again for me. So I was at home laboring, water still breaking. Like y'all, I did not realize how much water would come out, like how much fluids would come out y'all. Like I was so surprised. I thought when the water broke, like everything just came out at once and that was it. Like, no, like literally the whole day I had to put these depends on Listen, this whole video is going to be TMI. So if you don't want to hear none of this, you might as well just, girl, <laughs> you might as well not watch it. But I had to put these Depends on and it just felt like I kept changing it every like, literally felt like I kept changing it every 30 minutes. I was like, dang, like how much liquid, how much fluid is in here? Like, I don't know. I just was so surprised by that. Like stuff, those contractions were no joke. They started to get more intense. The first time I went, she did, when I went there at 5 a.m. to the birthing center, she did ask if I wanted to be checked. And I did get checked. And I'm not going to lie, y'all. I thought I was going to be a lot further than what I was. I forgot what she said I was. I thought I was going to be like four centimeters dilated. And I think she said I was about like three centimeters dilated or something like that. And it kind of like low-key discouraged me because I was like, dang, like, I feel like these contractions were really picking up. I feel like I should have been further. But I don't know, y'all. So the second time around, I didn't know if I wanted to get checked because I just didn't feel like get, getting disappointed. Fast forward to 4 p.m. Like I said, the contractions are coming back to back to back. We're in the car, y'all. I am struggling. Like that car ride was the worst. Like I was so uncomfortable. The contractions were coming in so intense, y'all. I finally get to the birthing center and they're setting up. They're getting everything going. Now my plan was to have a water birth. I wanted to be in the tub. But y'all, that went completely out the window. I didn't want to be in the tub. Once I got in there, y'all, I did start contracting and we just decided to just stay. Um, the contractions were picking up, but then they were kind of stopping. Like they would start and then they would stop. Like they were still going, but like sometimes it would slow down and then sometimes it would pick up. And honestly, like my midwife, she was telling me that a lot of people like to labor at home just because they're in their own environment and stuff. And honestly, if I had like a house, I would probably labor in my own house. Well, I don't know, girl. After this birth story, I don't know if I want. I don't think I, I don't know. We gonna get to it. I don't think I want to do any of that anymore. But beforehand, I was definitely open to the laboring at home because when I was at home, it felt like things were progressing a lot more. But when I was in there, I don't know if it's just because I felt the pressure. Like I had my midwife there and then she had a student with her and I'm not gonna lie y'all. No offense to the student. I like her, but I didn't really necessarily want her at my birth it's nothing against her but i don't know like you just know those people where you just really vibe with and you really click with she was always super nice but she was never like somebody that i really cling to and um before like going to my appointments and stuff she had missed a few of my appointments which i actually didn't mind and towards the end of my appointment she was like um i know i've been missing some of your appointments blah blah, blah. like i'm gonna be there at your birth and in my head i was thinking like i really don't care if you're there at my birth because I like you. I think you're nice, but I really don't want you at my birth. But y'all, she was, this lady was determined to be at my birth. So it was my midwife and then it was her there. So she, again, she was nice, but like, she just kept, like when I was contracting, she was like touching my forehead, like telling me like, relax your forehead, do this, do that. And honestly, I just didn't want to be touched. Like I honestly just wanted to be with my mom. Like my mom, I just wanted my mom there. And then like, you know, my regular midwife, the student, like I said, she's nice, but I just, we just didn't really click that well. Like we didn't really mesh that well. Like there were times where she was touching me that I didn't really want to be touched. And I did vocalize that. I'm like, no, I don't want this. No, I don't want that. But yeah, I don't know. Our, our personalities just doesn't really mesh well. So I was okay kind of irritated that she was at my birth. So I don't know maybe if that kind of had a role in why things started slowing down because I was just kind of like, leave me be. 
I don't know y'all but anyway so I'm laboring and stuff y'all mind y'all this is a birthing center so they don't have any epidural they don't have any like meds that they can really give you so at this point I'm feeling the contractions but I'm feeling them in my back y'all and the midwives they're feeling around they're telling me that he is actually sunny side up like he's not his head is not facing where it needs to face and that's why I'm really feeling the contractions in my back so y'all I was going through it in that birthing center y'all I was going through it and if I miss anything I might try to add a voiceover because honestly y'all I don't even want to relive this like it wasn't a terrible birthing experience but it was definitely like it was a lot for me okay it was a lot for a first time mom that never gave birth and I pretty much did the whole thing natural it was a lot for me okay it was a lot so I I honestly tried to block everything out from this birth I'm not gonna lie so if I miss something I'm sure I'm gonna be editing this back and I'm like dang I forgot to say this and that so boom, we're going through the labor. They're trying to tell me like I need to do mouth circuits. I need to do all these different types of stretches and stuff so they can, so we can hopefully get him to rotate around because they were like, we can, you can give birth like with him being sunny side up, but it's going to hurt even more. And I'm already in pain. I don't have any epidural. I don't have any medicine. Like the only thing that they could give me was this gas stuff but that was it and then they told me um to create a safe word so if i ever did want to transfer to the hospital and get epidural i could do that so at this point i think i'm like seven eight centimeters y'all and i'm getting closer to push like i'm feeling like i'm feeling like i'm getting closer to push y'all i'm like crying i'm looking at my mom my, i'm telling my mom like i'm done i can't make it no more like i it, honestly y'all it was all a blur like i remember i literally thought I'm not gonna lie y'all I looked up to the sky I'm like god just take me now like that's how I felt y'all that is how I felt them contractions was coming in deep like if I sat down they started hurting if I stand up it started hurting if I lay to my side like it felt like nothing that I did was stopping the contractions I was feeling it in my back y'all so then my midwife had this thing called a 10 something machine where you could put it on your back and that definitely helped a lot if I didn't have that I don't think I would have made it as far as I did either so it like sends like electric shocks to your back or the spot that like hurts. So um, as soon as a contraction comes, I would turn up the intensity and it would kind of help. But y'all, I was going through it. So I'm laboring and laboring. We get to the point where I can actually like push. And so I'm on the bed. I'm like pushing and y'all my midwife and my mom they're like we can see his head like he has a lot of hair i'm pretty sure i'm skipping some things but honestly yeah i don't know we're just gonna we're just gonna fast forward so i'm pushing and i'm pushing and i'm pushing and y'all it just felt like he was not coming out like he was not coming out like they kept telling me his head is right there his head is right there i see his hair i see his hair they're like feel it down there you can feel his hair i didn't want to feel nothing i just wanted this boy out okay y'all and mind you he was still sunny side up but i felt the urge to push so i'm trying to push and i'm trying to push and then at some point we ended up stopping just because um i actually my cervix actually started to get swollen so they gave me um benadryl i think they gave me they gave me some benadryl and then they tried to get me to like go to sleep a little bit so at this point i'm 10 centimeters dilated y'all like i'm 10 centimeters dilated um, I have no medicine so I made it all the way to 10 centimeters with absolutely no medicine all natural first time mom hell on earth okay it was hell on earth <laughs> and literally they can see his head but he's just not coming out because my cervix was so swollen you guys it was so swollen so they gave me Benadryl tried to get me to go to sleep they turned all the lights off and except for this one little lamp and y'all my midwives were actually going to sleep during the birth which I really didn't mind because you know it was it was a long day so mind you from 1 a.m it's now like it's nighttime at this point i don't even know what time it is but it's nighttime so i've been spending the whole day laboring with no medicine no nothing i'm in pain i'm trying to lay down like i would lay down and then like three minutes for three minutes i would like feel okay and i wouldn't feel no pain and then like boom like that contraction would just hit me and like i would stand up i would sit down i feel like a worm like i was squirming around i was crying i was literally crying y'all i was crying i was trying to hold on to my mom like it was crazy and then they kept the student they kept coming in to like check his heartbeat and stuff and my midwife actually apologized to me about a lot of stuff that happened in my birth because she was like i felt like the students were doing a bit too much like there were certain things that she wasn't even pleased about but I mean, like I said, 
it wasn't terrible, but there were certain moments where I was just like, please, like everybody just, this ain't it for me. Like there were certain moments where I was like, this is not it for me. I had woke up after that because I just couldn't sleep. Like after they gave me the Benadryl, I woke up. I just couldn't sleep because the contractions were hurting so bad. I remember looking at my mom like, I can't do this anymore. I can't make it. I don't know if I can make it. And I remember her looking at me like, what do you mean? You don't know if you, if you can make it. I was like, I can't make it. I can't make it. They were talking to me. I got to the point in my birth where they were talking to me and I just didn't give a damn. Like I didn't care about nothing they were talking about. Like I literally felt like I was gone, y'all. Like I literally looked up to the sky and was like, just take me now, God. Like I, I'm being so honest and I probably, it probably sounds very dramatic, but that's how I felt in the moment. Like there was a point where the contractions were coming and I didn't even make no faces or nothing. Like that's how done I was. Like I was so over, I was so over it and I was so tired. Like I literally got no sleep. I was tired. I was in pain. I just didn't give a damn anymore. Okay. So at this point, the mid, my midwife and the student, there was another lady that was also in labor, but she lived on base. And my midwife and the student were the only two people who had a pass to get on base. So they had to call the other midwife that I um, also met with. They had to call her and this backup midwife from a different um, clinic. And y'all, I'm not a huge fan of that other midwife. Like, she was also not my favorite either. Like, I like the one that I was meeting up with. Um, but the one that was from a different clinic that was filling in to help the midwife that I met with, I did not like that lady at all. Like my mom didn't like her either. Like she's a nice lady, but, but when they told me that they had to leave and they were going to bring in the backup midwives, like I said, the other one, I love her. She's great. But the one that they brought in from a different clinic, I did not, I wasn't really rocking with her that much. So when I seen her walk in, Y'all, I literally felt doomed. Like, when she walked in, I was like, God damn. Like, I'm never getting this baby out. Like, that's literally how I felt. I was like, just take me now, God. Like, just take me now because I'm never getting this baby out. So, they walked in. My mom, she was like, I did not like that lady either. I'm like, my mom actually, I hope they don't watch this video. But honestly, I'm not going to say that. I'm not going to say that. But my mom wasn't a huge fan of that lady either. So, she walked in. I immediately, I just felt this sense of just I just felt doomed like I felt defeated I felt like I'm never getting this baby out and this is the way I'm gonna leave the world like I'm not gonna make it through this birth like that's how I felt and I know this sounds very dramatic but that's literally how I felt I'm like I'm not making it out this birth because if this lady is here like I just felt so defeated like I felt so defeated and I felt so tired and I felt so done so when they came in again I'm trying to push I'm trying to push and I feel like I'm not getting anywhere like they keep saying I see his head but I feel like he's not like it's not moving anywhere. So there was one point where the midwife, she told me to try to use the bathroom, like to try to pee. So I went to the bathroom, me and my mom, and I realized I could not pee, y'all. Like I couldn't pee. So and then it dawned on me. I was like, you know what? I haven't peed in a while. Like I haven't peed since 11 a.m. the day before. So I told that to the midwife and she was like, oh, that's not good. Like you need to pee like. And then they happened to look at my urethra, I think that's what it's called, the pee hole, whatever, I don't know. They happened to look and they were like, they realized that it was really swollen and they realized that this is probably the main reason why he can't come out because my bladder is so full, like my bladder is so full and I can't even pee. So she tried to put a catheter in, but it would not go in, like it was just too much. So at this point, they're talking to me and they're like, listen you're gonna have to use the bathroom and we can't put the catheter in. So at this point, you're gonna have to transfer to a hospital. And honestly, I did not give a damn. I wanted to get the hell up out of that birthing center because I was over it. Like like I said, the midwives were beautiful, but the whole, like from the beginning when I got there, it just felt like being in that birthing center, everything was going wrong. Like there was people there that I didn't necessarily want there. The vibe just wasn't really vibing for me the way I thought it was going to vibe. So I was just like, honestly, I do not give a damn. Take me to the hospital. I want an epidural. I do not care. My mom, she when she looked back, she was like, yeah, I should have never, like, I should have let you do what you wanted to do because I wanted to get an epidural earlier on. But my mom was like, you're already there. Like, you're 10 centimeters dilated. You don't need an epidural. But... I was like, no, mom, like I am done. Like, honey, if I don't get this epidural, I don't think y'all gonna see me alive. Like, that's how I felt, honestly. So 
they transferred me to this hospital and this hospital didn't really have the greatest reviews so my mom was like not excited she was like i don't want you at this hospital i don't want them giving you this epidural because if they mess it up and you become paralyzed or something y'all i didn't give a damn like i heard my mom was saying but i'm like listen i don't care i just need to get the hell up out this birthing center and i just need to get an epidural and i just need to get this baby out of me i don't give a damn what happens after this like I don't honestly I just didn't care I didn't I just did not care I didn't I didn't, I didn't care y'all I thought that this was gonna be the end for me okay I really did I thought that this was gonna be it I thought I thought it was gonna be it for me so I was like I don't really give a damn what happens hell I don't care somebody just give me epidural and get me the hell up out this birthing center so my midwife is calling and the the hospital is full but she's telling like the doctor was black so she was telling her like listen we can't get the catheter in like she can't even pee like and y'all having a full bladder and a contraction at the same damn time was girl you know how they say like after you give birth you have amnesia and then you're able to have more kids i'm never gonna forget this like even right now telling this story like even right now when i see my son i love my son but like to think about future kids i don't even want to think about future kids like <laughs> girl no like i just mm -mm. so having a full bladder and also having contraction at the same time girl that was the worst feeling ever mind you i am 10 centimeters dilated okay i'm 10 centimeters dilated i'm having intense contractions okay no medicine has been given to me okay i'm done baby i'm out of the game so the doctor she was like okay bring her in like they arranged something for me to come in i was so grateful because the hospital was super full like there were so many babies being born that day like it was crazy so once i get to the hospital y'all i instantly felt this like relief like i honestly felt like i was in good hands like it was crazy like i don't know and i remember i, me I remember telling god like listen I don't like whatever happens on when I give birth like I don't care if it's at the birthing center I don't care if it's at the hospital like I just want whatever whatever to happen happen I was never like super strict on my birthing plan like I was never like I want to be in the birthing center I want the water birth I want this like I always kept an open mind which is why when I had to transfer to the hospital I wasn't sad or upset because a lot of times a lot of people do get sad or they get like disappointed because they really want to get birth in the birthing center and then they have to transfer to a hospital and they feel defeated y'all i did not give a damn i was excited to go to the hospital and the moment i sat on that bed i knew that this was the right decision i was like i'm so glad that i'm here and they immediately um hooked me up to the machines they um put this little thing on his head because uh, to check his heartbeat so like they put like some machine thing on his head because like i said y'all his head is like literally right there so they put a machine on his head to monitor him they're hooking me up this lady comes in and she's like doing my catheter and she's like i don't understand how they had a problem doing the catheter she, they were throwing i'm not gonna lie they were low-key throwing shade at my midwives because they were like who did this iv like the iv is crooked they were like crooked they were like um, I don't understand how they couldn't get the catheter in because it's really like yes you're swollen down there but it's really not that hard like they were low-key throwing shots like they were low-key throwing shots in my midwives they were like I don't understand but girl we're gonna get you together and then they were asking me did I want an epidural I said yes okay I said yes I want the epidural because at this point I just needed I just needed rest like I just needed to sleep like these contractions are still coming in back to back to back to back to back like I am physically, mentally, emotionally tired, y'all. Like, I'm tired. My I can't pee. My bladder's full. Everything's swollen. I'm in pain. The birthing center was low-key a mess, okay? Like, everything just, it was just too much for me. I'm a first-time mom. It's my first time experiencing this. I just wanted to be able to sleep. So, the guy came in. They got my catheter hooked up. Immediately, I felt so much relief because, you know, I was able to pee. So, I felt so freaking good like honestly when i got in that hospital i felt so good like i remember looking at the reviews for the hospital and it was not the greatest i'm not gonna lie but at that moment i just felt like i was in good hands i was like oh my gosh like this this is i should have went with this like honestly i was i should i should have came here first like my next if i have any more kids in the future i'm not doing a birthing center i'm sorry i'm not doing midwives i'm Mm, what i do midwives i don't know i'm not doing midwives and i'm not doing birthing center it's nothing against them like i said they were nice ladies but i just don't feel like that's for me and honestly i feel like if you're a first time mom 
I don't know if you should go to the birthing center, but I don't want to say that because everybody's experience is different. But for me personally, next time if I have another kid, epidural me from the beginning, babe. I don't want to feel a thing, okay? Epidural me and I'm going to the hospital. Screw the birthing center. I'm not doing the birthing center and I'm probably not damn sure not doing midwives. Give me the doctors, give me the hospital, hook me up to the machines, okay? Like that's just how I'm feeling, okay? Because I honestly feel like if I would have went to the hospital, I don't think I would have went through half the stuff that I went through. And I'm just being honest. So, boom. So, they, the guy comes in. He does my epidural. I'm low-key scared because I can see my mom looking at me because she's just like, I can't believe this. Like, you're already 10 centimeters dilated. Now, y'all, I don't want y'all to be looking at my mom crazy. But she was just basically like, you're almost done. Like, you don't need this. And she was scared that, that something was going to go wrong with the epidural. But looking back, she was like, I'm sorry that I even was doing all that because you're the one that's in pain. It's your body. It's your decision. And then I'm glad that you got it because she was also saying, I don't know if you would have been able to make it. So boom, I got the epidural. I felt so much better, y'all. I was able to sleep. Um, like I said, it was really busy in there. So they were, they had like two emergency C-sections. So after those two emergency C-sections, it was time for me to push. So we did do a few practice pushes and then we finally did the official push. So the doctors came in, all the nurses came in and y'all I'm pushing at this point. I'm not gonna lie. Y'all I was tired. So I was pushing and pushing and because he was still, he was still sunny side up y'all. I didn't know he was still sunny side up, but he was still sunny side up. And so let me just give y'all this little brief thing. My, with my mom, I took three days to come out. My mom was in labor for three days. They had to vacuum me out. They had to uh, do something else. I think they had to break her water. I don't know. They had to do everything with her. So literally I felt like this was my karma for my mom because the same thing my mom went through is the same thing I went through. Like it took him two days to come out and then they had to vacuum him out. And y'all the first two times they tried to vacuum him out, it kept slipping off of his head because he has so much hair on his head. And the third time, like I knew in my heart, like that third push with the vacuum, I knew like if he didn't come out on this time on that round, that I was going to have to have a C-section. Like I knew in my heart, they didn't tell me like, this is the last push, but I knew in my head, I felt it in my spirit. I felt it in my soul. I'm like, this is it. Like, this is it. Like, I know that this is the last chance. Like, I know that if he don't come out on this, it's, it's a wrap for me. Like I got to get a C-section. So y'all I'm pushing and mind you, I have the epidural, so I don't really feel nothing down there, but all that pushing y'all, when I was at the birthing center, I was pushing for four hours y'all for four hours, no medicine, okay? I was pushing for four hours. So by the time I got to the hospital, I was exhausted. Even after having the epidural and being able to sleep, I was still so tired, like I was so, so, so tired. So when it actually came down to me pushing, even though I couldn't feel anything, I was just physically drained. And I kept hearing them say, harder, 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 push harder. I'm thinking in my head like, girl, my lungs is about to pop out. Like I don't got nothing else left in me to give. Like girl, th there's nothing left to give. Like this is my hardest push. But for some reason, knowing in my, I knew in my spirit, like this is going to be the last push. Like this is it. Like they can't use the vacuum more than three times. And this is like low key. They did do it more than three times because the third time it didn't like slip off. It slipped off his head. Something happened. And she was like, you know, we're not going to count that as the third time. But I knew like that last one that they did. I knew like in my spirit, I was like, if I don't get him out on this one, it's a wrap for me. So boom, that I just remember pushing. Everybody was in the room, all the nurses, like everybody was in there and they were like, give this your best shot. I remember pushing so freaking hard y'all so hard with the last bit of might I had in me I'm like god if I don't get him out now just take me just take me now like <laughs> just take me so I finally pushed him and I remember seeing him come out and he didn't immediately cry um he didn't immediately cry but he actually pooped and peed on me when he came out y'all he didn't cry but he pooped and peed on me so I remember him coming out and they placed him on my chest and I was just like, honestly, y'all, I didn't know what the hell was going on. I was just sitting there like, I'm glad he's out. So they finally got him out. He didn't cry immediately, but all I heard was, oh my God, he pooped on you. He peed on you. So he pooped and peed on me and then he cried. And then I just remember the nurses taking pictures on my phone. My mom was crying. She cut the umbilical cord. I remember them saying the placenta was out. The doctor was saying I had second degree tears and she was like sewing me up and stuff. And I just remember sitting there like, 
I really just gave birth. Like I really just gave birth and I was just in shock. Like even now when I think about it, I'm like, I really gave birth. Like he really came out of me. Like that's crazy. So he was born on November the 11th at 5.07 PM. So mind you guys, I went into labor November the 10th at 1.23 AM is when my water broke. I didn't give birth to him until the next day, November the 11th at 5.07 PM. And y'all, I was so exhausted and so tired. So, boom, they're cleaning him up and everything. Got him together. And yeah, y'all, that was pretty much my birthing story. After that, I did have some things go down. Like I had high blood pressure. My legs and feet were swelling. The swelling has gone down. My blood pressure has gone down. I went to the hospital like three times, y'all, because things was just going on like things was just things were just thinking okay after i discharged from the hospital and stuff i had to come back to the hospital like three times because legs were swollen only one leg was swelling up my foot they had to check to make sure i didn't have a blood clot or nothing like blood pressure was high like things were just going on so i have definitely been through the ringer and i've experienced a lot but yeah that is my birth story Hopefully I didn't forget anything. I feel like I did. I kind of skimmed through it. Like I said, I didn't even want to share this story because I didn't even want to relive it. Um, but I definitely learned a lot. I'm glad that I did get to experience the birthing center um, because it's something that I always wanted to experience. But like I said, I'm not going to lie. If I ever have more kids, I'm getting the epidural for one. And part of me does kind of feel like, dang, I wish I would have just continued going because I was 10 centimeters dilated and I didn't have any epidural, but I don't think I would have been, I actually, I don't want to say I don't think I wouldn't have been able to push without the epidural because I was just tired y'all. And then they had two emergency C-sections. So I would have had to wait all that time and during all that time I would have been going through contractions. So I don't regret getting the epidural. If I have any kid, any more kids in the future, I'm getting the epidural and I'm going to the hospital. Like the birth center, y'all ain't got to worry about me. Like <laughs> I thought I was going to want an at home birth that's a wrap for me you ain't got to worry about that just epidural me honey and put me in the hospital okay i will take my hospital visits i'm glad i got to experience it but yeah that was just not for me like i said the ladies were nice but there were certain things about the birthing center that i just was not a huge fan of and there were certain things where i was just like no and i can immediately feel the shift like when i when i left the birthing center and went into the hospital completely different like I felt safe I felt comfortable and I thought it was going to be the opposite like I thought the hospital would have gave me like the weird vibes and the birthing center was supposed to give me that comforting vibe but it didn't give me those vibes the hospital actually did so yeah so that is my labor and delivery story time hopefully I added everything in here that I wanted to add I don't want to have any more kids anytime soon okay I don't want to have no kids anytime soon I just want to love on my son and enjoy him. So yeah, that is my story. Let me know what you guys think about it down below. Also, let me know if you have ever tried a birthing center before and if you would ever try it. Like I said, I would say if you want to try it, just try it, you know, and if it don't work, you can always just go to the hospital. Um, but personally for me, I'm not going to do that again. Okay. <laughs> that's a wrap for me they don't they don't gotta worry about me no more i do plan on um doing like a morning routine a night routine a day in our life um maybe i'll vlog his two week appointment next week so yeah i will uh do more vlogs and stuff with us but yeah that's definitely enough blabbering i blabbered enough in this video don't forget to follow me on all of my social medias it'll be down below in the description box with the direct links thank you guys so freaking much for watching and of course as always i'll see you guys in my next video bye you guys